Hey everyone, this is the Daily Dose of Medicine. In this video, we will talk about everything you need to know about vitamin E. What is vitamin E? Vitamin E food sources. Vitamin E the daily requirement, benefits. Should I take vitamin E supplements? Vitamin E deficiency signs and symptoms and causes. Vitamin E deficiency causes. Stay tuned till the end. You can find the papers I use to gather the information from the links down below. And please like the video and recommend to your friends. Vitamin E is a fat soluble nutrient known for its antioxidant properties. It helps protect cells from oxidative damage caused by free radicals, which can contribute to aging, the development of chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. It comprises eight naturally occurring forms for tocopherols and four tocotrienols. Among these, alpha tocopherol is the most biologically active form and the one that meets human dietary requirements. Re the recommended dietary allowance for vitamin E for healthy adult men and women is 15 mg per day, which is equal to 22.4 units per day. The upper intake for vitamin E are set at 1500 units per day for natural forms and 1100 per day for synthetic forms, primarily due to the risk of bleeding associated with high doses. So high doses are linked to bleeding. Vitamin E benefits. One of the primary benefits is its role in immune function. It has been shown to enhance immune responses, particularly in all older adults and reduce the risk of infections. It modulates T cell function and impacts inflammatory mediators, which can be beneficial in reducing susceptibility to infectious diseases and allergic conditions such as asthma. It also has an anti-inflammatory properties, can modulate the synthesis of pro-inflammatory molecules and inhibit pathways such as NF-kappa B, which are involved in inflammation and oxidative stress responses. This makes it potentially useful in managing conditions like non-alcoholic hepatostatosis, which is which happens when excess fat builds up in the liver and low grade inflammation. In dermatology, vitamin E supplementation has been shown to uh, positive effects in inflammatory skin diseases, especially in atopic dermatitis and psoriasis. All the further research is needed to confirm these findings. Additionally, it has been studied for its neuroprotective properties. It may slow the progression of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and protect against respiratory infections in older adults. However, the clinical evidence for its effic efficacy in preventing cardiovascular events, neurodegenerative diseases, and cancer still remains inconsistent. In summary, the benefits include its antioxidant immune boosting and anti-inflammatory properties with potential applications in managing skin diseases, neurodegenerative conditions, and overall immune health. Why someone can have the deficiency? It primarily affects the nervous system and muscles, so it's good to know what's causing the deficiency. You can have vitamin E deficiency when you have fat malabsorption syndromes, like in cystic fibrosis, chronic cholestatic liver disease, celiac disease, and pancreatitis. They can lead to fat malabsorption, thereby reducing the absorption of vitamin E. Genetic disorders, genetic abnormalities affecting the lipoprotein metabolism, such as uh, A-beta lipoproteinemia and the defects in the gene for alpha tocopherol transfer protein can result in deficiency. These genetic defects impair the transport and delivery of vitamin E to the tissues. Although rare, a diet extremely low in fat can also lead to vitamin E deficiency. This is more common in developing countries where malnutrition and poor dietary intake are prevalent. Specific syndromes, conditions like short bowel syndrome and isolated vitamin E deficiency syndrome can also lead to deficiency due to impaired absorption. What symptoms we, we will see with vitamin E deficiency? Although rare in healthy individuals, 
it can present with a variety of symptoms, primarily affecting the neuromuscular and rheumatological system. The main thing we will see with vitamin E deficiency is neurological symptoms, like muscle weakness, loss of feeling in the arms and legs, which is known as peripheral neuropathy, problems with coordination and balance, ataxia, difficulty walking and controlling body movements, vision problems, including retinitis pigmentosa, normal retina and retina with retinitis pigmentosa. In retinitis pigmentosa, we see night blindness during adolescence and followed by a progressive loss of peripheral vision leading to tunnel vision in patients with retinitis pigmentosa and decreased visual equity. Hyporeflexia, which is reduced reflexes, dysarthria, difficulty speaking, head tremor, which is titubation. Besides that, we can see some hematological problems like anemia and granulocytosis. Granulocytosis is increasing the number of granulocytes, which is a type of white blood cell, including neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Also, we can see profound muscle weakness. The question, the important question is, should I take vitamin E supplementation? The decision to take vitamin E supplements should be based on individual health status and specific clinical indications, current evidence on the benefits and risks, mixed. For cardiovascular disease prevention, the evidence does not support clear benefits. The HOPE study found no significant reduction in cardiovascular events with vitamin E supplementation in high-risk patients. You can find this study from the links down below. Similarly, the Kidney Disease Outcomes Quality Initiative guidelines indicate that vitamin E supplementation did not affect, did not affect all causes of mortality or cardiovascular outcomes in patients with chronic kidney disease. Regarding the cancer prevention study called SELECT found that vitamin E supplementation was associated with an increased risk for prostate cancer. However, there are specific conditions where vitamin E supplementation may be beneficial. For instance, vitamin E has shown benefits in improving liver histology and clinical outcomes in patients with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and advanced fibrosis. In terms of safety, it's generally considered safe at doses up to 800 units per day, but higher doses may increase the risk of bleeding and other adverse effects. In summary, routine vitamin E supplementation is not recommended for the general population due to lack of clear benefits and potential risks. It may be considered in specific clinical scenarios, such as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis under medical supervision. Let's talk about the food sources where you can get vitamin E. Vitamin E is primarily obtained through the diet with plant-based foods such as oils, nuts, fruits, and vegetables being the main sources. However, the content and profile of vitamin E can be altered during food processing and cooking. Sources of vitamin E. Edible oils, these are the most prominent sources of vitamin E, including oils from corn, olive, palm, rice bran, and peanut. Nuts and seeds, almonds, hazelnuts, peanuts, and pistachios are particularly rich. Green leafy vegetables like spinach and broccoli are good sources. Foods like avocados and certain fruit seeds, such as those from pomegranates and raspberries, also contain significant amounts of vitamin E. Legumes like soybeans, chickpeas, and lentils are a valuable source of tocopherol, a form of vitamin E. These foods provide a range of tocopherols and tocotrienols, which are the different forms of vitamin E, each with unique biological activities and health benefits. Regular consumption of these foods can help meet the daily requirements for vitamin E and support your overall health. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Please recommend this video to your friends and don't forget to watch our other vitamin videos I'll be putting in the screen. You can always find the links from down below, the studies that I gathered the information, and I'll see you on the next video.